Hello everybody, my name is Jason Walker, joined by McKay Bickmore. And we're here in downtown Columbus, Ohio. We're at the Utah State Team Hotel. We're just a couple of blocks away from Nationwide Arena. And we're getting ready to watch Utah State take on Washington. And we're joined by the Spectrum on Wheels. We got the herd here. Say hello. <laughs> So they all drove yeah. over 30 hours from Logan, Utah, left at midnight on like Thursday morning to come here, or like Wednesday, <laughs> I forget, it was such a long bus ride. But they came all the way here to watch Utah State play, so you know, what was your most exciting part of the, was there an exciting part of the bus ride? You know, I think the most exciting part is when we finally got to our hotel and realized <laughs> we were done with the drive, but you know, do anything, you can watch our Aggies play, so it's worth it. Yeah, so like what? What motivated you to come down? I mean, you're skipping school, you're taking the 30-hour bus drive. Is that like how much does it mean to you to come watch this Utah State team to make this kind of sacrifice? You know, been an Aggie fan my whole life. It's been a while since Utah State made the tournament, so I decided, you know, when's the, I had to make it out. There's no way I was missing this. So, 30-hour bus ride is what it meant. <sighs> I was coming. And so you mentioned it's been a long time. It's been since 2011, so eight years. And it's been even longer since Utah State won an NCAA tournament game. It's been since 2001 where they beat Ohio State, who's here, you know, stationed in Ohio, obviously. So it'll be a really interesting thing to see if this historic Utah State team can manage to beat Washington. Like, what, what do you think the matchup against Washington's like for Utah State? You know, I actually really like our uh, matchup against Washington. Um, I think we have enough shooters to go against their 2-3 zone. You know, I think that we'll come out to play, and I, I'm predicting an Aggie win. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I do like the, the matchup, especially you look at that 2-3 zone. We do have some shooters. Also look at Washington. They're one of the worst rebounding teams in the country for, you know, being a Power 5 conference team. You know, they, they rank almost 300th in rebounding percentage. Utah State is one of the better rebounding teams, so that's a pretty good matchup for them. I mean, especially you got big guys like Namish Keita and uh, Quinn Taylor down low, and Justin Bean, who's kind of a fan favorite. I love Bean. <laughs> I love me some Bean. So you kind of explain that. like, so, How did that kind of come to pass, this kind of obsession with Justin Bean? He was a bench warmer last year and for kind of the start of this season. Like, Do you, do you know how that all started up? You know, I remember just the first thing I ever remember of him is he sang karaoke, <laughs> and I've loved him ever since. So he sings karaoke. That's <laughs> He stole my heart away with that. But... Basketball-wise, I love the passion he plays with, so it makes it really easy. He makes those really important plays that don't always show up on the stat sheets. So, I mean, it makes it really easy for the crowd to love him and get the bean chant going. <laughs> so what is it like to get that bean chant going, really any chant? Like, what's that like for you guys? Oh, there's nothing like Spectrum Magic, you know. It's uh, something different, gets loud, and we try to do our best to bring it here. But, you know, I'll, someone came with a can of beans, and that's how it all started. <laughs> Who, who was the brought that? Was just some, some That guy? was my cousin. That's your Bickmore. cousin. <laughs> All right, famous cousin here. The guy who brought the can of beans. Even ended up, I think, there's a picture the Herald Journal took. Really yeah, nice picture there. But So let's look at a couple of players for Washington that you guys want to keep your eye on. I mean, when Utah State found out, nobody really knew anything about Washington. Actually, Sam Merrill, after you know they found out and the media was interviewing him, he's like, do you know anything? And he's like, they play 2-3 zone. So it was like the only thing they knew. So a couple of players you want to keep your eye on are Jalen Noel and Matisse Tybel. So that's the player of the year and defensive player of the year right there for the Pac-12. Matisse Tybel, he averages three and a half steals a game and almost two and a half blocks. And so is a real defensive monster. And then Noel, Pac-12 player of the year, averaged 16.2 points a game. So not a huge score, but definitely that's their leading score. So you want to keep an eye on them. But let's talk about, you know, the Utah State players. Which ones are you excited to watch today? You know, my personal favorite is Brock Eagle, the bald eagle. <laughs> you know, I've been, been playing with him since third grade. But, you know, obviously we got Sam. I think, he, had, you know, his role in today is going to be big. Um, you know, I, I expect a good outing from Nemeas Keita as well, our defensive player of the year. And I think if he can really play big, uh, just do what he's been doing all season, I like our chances. So what do you think the key to the game is? Like, what is the thing Utah State's really got to do in this game? You mentioned Kaden and Mayer. Like, what are things this whole team has to do to try and get a win against Washington? You know, I think the biggest thing is is uh, just how we attack them. I think, really, if we can get inside of their 2-3 zone, um, kind of start inside and work our way back out, I think if we can do that, um, get some good momentum going, and then 
hopefully everything rolls from there. Yeah, definitely getting inside of that 2-3 zone is huge. And if you can dominate inside, because Washington, you know, despite the fact they're actually kind of small and when you look at length, they get a lot of blocks. So being able to dominate inside with Kata and all those guys, definitely going to be huge. And then shooting the lights out, definitely. You know, he gets the 2-3 zone, typically works pretty well. All right, so let's let's start wrapping this up. Let's let's look at score predictions. Right. Obviously, you, th you thought Utah State's going to win. Of course. What do you think the score is going to be? I'm thinking it'll be pretty close, but Aggies will pull away 75 to 69. 75 69. You guys approve? You think 75 69? What do you think? Utah State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think that's a pretty nice score prediction. Uh, I think, I don't know, I'm thinking a similar score, probably about 76-72. I think it's going to be a, a close game. Come down to free throws at the end, but I think we'll have some really big plays from Sam Merrill and Amish Keita, the whole gang. But anyway, this is Jason Walker again, uh, joined by McKay Bickmore. McKay Bickmore. Go Aggies. Again, just a, just a few hours away from tip-off of the first NCAA tournament game for Utah State in more than eight years, and they're looking for their first win in almost 20. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later.